What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts will teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. And our sponsor is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Uh, check out rise25.com. It's run by myself, my co founder, John Corcoran. It's application only. And today we have, well, you've already heard from him, Charlie Moyer, who went from unemployed. Usually I check this ahead of time, but um, I do a lot of research ahead of time, so we'll assume it's right. You can correct me. We have Charlie okay. Moyer, who went from unemployed military veteran with no e commerce or online marketing experience to growing his men's grooming company, Badass Beard Care, from 3000 per month to three. 375000 uh, in monthly sales. It all started with a simple $20 investment, and now he employs over 12 people in their El Dorado Hills facility. Yep. Well, actually, now for the holidays, we're up closer to about 17. 17. Yep. Charlie, thanks for joining me. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that was uh, pr- pretty accurate. Okay. So. I want to be exactly accurate, so if there's any part yep. of it, correct me. Well, so the, the, the very first month, technically, I think was like thirty dollars in sales because we launched the site later in September, um, okay. and then <laughs> so October was like three hundred in sales. Yeah, um, and then November is when I started offering uh, our samples, yeah. and I got the idea because I was going to school. Uh, I had a bunch of veterans that were there, and I was making the products for myself. And I was like, you know what? I, I can't use all this when you when you buy in bulk to make your own product. You have way more than you need, especially when you're first starting to grow. So. Yeah. I just put it in these sample sizes and gave it to them, and then they started giving it to their friends, and all of a sudden, people were asking for me to make products for them. So, yeah. um, off, offered that same free sample online, and like so, that was uh, November that I started offering that. So, November we had three thousand in sales, and then December uh, we had thirty thousand in sales, and wow. then we climbed every single month for a year straight. That's amazing. Yep. So, talk about the sample. So, how many? I don't know if this is accurate, but how many samples did you give away in the first year? The first year, I read seventy thousand somewhere. It, 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 yeah, at least seventy thousand um, samples. Yeah, it's it's a little hard for us to get completely accurate numbers, yeah. uh, just because a, a lot it's of people. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I can see how many times our coupon code for the free sample was used in the first year, and, and it was about seventy thousand. But we had people yeah. that you know decided they didn't want to get something for free. It was only like three ninety nine or four dollars. They wanted to buy it themselves. So we had people that were, you know, buying multiple of our sample sizes just to try it out. So for the samples, when someone yep. goes on, can they get them for free or is it, do they have to pay for shipping or how did you decide to work that? Because that's an expensive endeavor. It is, it is a very expensive endeavor and also very um, time consuming to try to make these tiny little samples all the time. But I uh, found it was worth it. Um, I'm sorry, can, can you repeat the no, question? No, what was the strategy? I want to see, did you at first, was it completely free? Did you charge for shipping? And then what is, so, it, what is yeah, it like now? Uh, shipping has been two dollars and fifty cents since we started. So uh, I, I just charged what the post office was charging me. I didn't charge for handling. I didn't charge for the packaging or anything like that. Hmm. Um, just whatever the post office charged. So that's that's still what we're doing. The post office actually hiked its rates at the beginning of this year, but because we were sending out so many free samples, we actually were able to get a discounted rate. So we're back down to where we were before the hike. So basically, people can go on and they can mm-hmm. buy a free sample. They just have to pay for the postage. And that's two dollars. It's two dollars and fifty cents, and if they don't like it, we offer to refund their shipping or send them another sample for free wow. and we'll pay for shipping. So, how do you decide what size the sample should be? What size is it currently? Uh, currently, it's about three milliliters, about a tenth of an ounce for okay. the oil, um, and the balm is about a sixth of an ounce. Okay. Um, what is that like with someone using it? Is that like a week's worth? Like what? So obviously, you know, if you got a beard like mine, or if you got stubble, or if you got a beard that's two foot long, it really depends. Right. Um, I can get probably three to four uses out of the sample oil, okay. and four to five uses out of the sample balm. Okay. And now, uh, just recently, we've off- offered a free sample of our all natural beard and body wash as well, so people can get a free sample of all three, still for just two dollars and fifty cents shipped. 
And, so you know, I figured, why yeah. that size? Why? I mean, because you could obviously go, we could make it smaller, we could get larger. So any, any smaller, and I feel like people would think they're getting ripped off for the $2.50 for shipping. Yeah. Um, although, you know, it costs just that to ship it. If they try to yeah. ship it back, it would cost, cost right. them more. But, but you it know, is the time. It, I mean, your your yeah. team and st- your packaging it. You have the cost of the goods. I mean, yeah, it's, well, it's consumers a lot of cost don't see that. Them. Yeah, consumers don't see that. C- consumers only want to f- see, you know, what they think it would cost them to do the same thing. And if they're not a business owner, they don't realize everything goes into it. So right. w- one of the biggest things that I've learned since starting the business is you have to think like the consumer. And uh, I'll give you an example yeah. of that, and it ties into the, to the free sample. Yeah. Uh, so. Everything was entirely online or social media, and I was handling all of our messages on Facebook. And when I first launched the ad for the free sample, that, that $20 ad that you're talking about, um, I got like between 600 and 1,000 messages a day wow. on Facebook. People asking, you know, how do I get this? What's the code? What do I do? And then Jeez. so I, I put everything on the site. So I, you know, it took me three months of doing that every day of answering all those messages. But finally, I just put it on the site, and I was like, you know what? I put it there. That way, anyone that wants it can get it. You can just send it um, to them. Yeah. But I was, but I was still getting messages of people saying this is a scam. The coupon code doesn't work, you know, and all this stuff. And I'd be like, okay, well, you know, what what code are you using? And they would misspell the word trial. You know, it's T R I A L. They would spell it T R I L E, T R A I L. Like just all these different variations. And it was really hard to tell these people like, we're not scamming you. You're just not spelling the word trial. <laughs> so. Right. Uh, it was very frustrating for a few months, and then finally, I, it was an epiphany. I created coupon codes to match every possible version of the word. So instead of correcting people, I just made all these different versions of the code so that no matter how they tried to enter this code, it would work for them. Right. That's smart. So that initial investment, that was in a Facebook ad? Yeah, the Facebook ad. And then what did you actually put in the Facebook ad? Because at the point, obviously I read at the beginning was, no e-commerce, no online marketing experience. What nope. did you put in the ad? Uh, it was a picture of the sample size of oil and balm. And then it said uh, in the text, just you know, like and share our page. And then message us for a coupon code for a free sample. And then you know, I was like, okay, we'll see what happens. I, I, I put it up on our, on our Facebook page. This is back before Facebook really jacked up with their algorithms. Now it's <laughs> hardly anyone sees what you post. But... Uh, when I first posted, I only had you know a, a couple hundred followers or maybe a thousand followers, and out of those you know very small amount of followers, we actually had thirty or forty orders for the free sample. So I was like, okay, well, if more people see this, I think that'll be you know the conversion rate will be pretty good. So I was like, let's see what happens. I, I put twenty bucks into it for a day just to see what happens, and we had like sixty orders that day wow. for for a twenty dollar investment out of nowhere. 60, so like, these are just, those are just sample, sam- oh, those are sample well, sizes, I guess. Most were sample, but then we saw um, a lot of people, because I have a how-to video that shows the size of the sample, and I was like, okay, this, this is how you apply the oil, this is how you apply the balm, and then to properly style it, I'm going to use this brush and this comb to finish it off. And I had that video posted with the same page the free sample was on. So we had a lot of people that came through and bought, you know, the comb or the brush, or uh, what actually made us a lot of money, I was very surprised. So the first, you know, one free sample, normally the $4, coupon code got it for free. And then we had eight different scents to choose from. And what a lot of people were doing, I would say probably one out of five of the customers who got the free sample would buy the other seven. Really? Yeah. It, it was a trip and oh, they loved it. That's weird. Yeah, they loved it. They're like, okay, well, all these scents smell great or sound great. So I'll just get one for free, but I really want to try everything this company offers. And so we called it the trial kit. We put it in its own packaging, its own little custom bag with, you know, an instruction card and a guitar pick to scoop the bomb out and everything. And that's, uh, that's been our number one seller since, since we started that. It's actually a trial kit, sample of all of our scents. Wow. What's the most popular uh, scent for that? I mean, it, I was looking. I mean, you have, you have a lot of scents. Yeah, we have, 12, we have 12 now. So uh, there's a – it depends on who's buying. Actually. I'm going to make a guess. I have an internal okay. guess on this. Let's hear it. Ladies, man. Let's, that that is the most popular online. I think strictly yeah. because of the name. Right. The scent. Uh, so it's, it's cool because at the mall kiosk, I can actually do market research. So we have all of our scents lined up, and I have all these people walk through, and everyone smells every single one of the scents we have, and so I get the feedback there. So uh, ladies' man is is probably the number two at the kiosk. I would say number one is the Royal Knight, which is one of our newest scents. Mm. Why is that? Um, 
it's Earl Grey tea with lavender and vanilla. And we actually we make it by brewing the Earl Grey tea into the oil. Really? Yep. Wow. How do you decide to come up with a new scent? What was the first? What was the original? Uh, so, well, we have a scent called the original, but it actually was not the very first scent that I created. The very first scent that I created was the biker. And uh, originally, so the reason why I wanted to grow a beard was because my dad had a beard growing up, and him and his friends were all bikers. So when I first started to turn this into a company, uh, the first name that I floated was Biker Beard Balm. And then uh, I decided that that was a little too... Uh, niche or something? Yeah, just, you know, there's only, only so many bikers. Beard care is that. niche enough. Like, you need yeah. to, like, yeah. It's exactly. You know, and like I said, I, I didn't know anything about business. I didn't know anything about e-commerce. But, you know, I was like, all right, well... You know, if, if you're not a biker, you might think that, okay, well, I'm going to try something else. So uh, the biker was the first scent when I was just going to do one, and that was it. But then I enjoyed making it so much and experimenting with the different scents to make it that I decided just to make, you know, a, f- a few more, and it just kept, uh, kept rolling. So Ladies' Man, The Royal yep. Knight. Yep. Um, what's, what's another popular one? I'm just looking uh, at I- it right here. The Viking is really popular. Viking. It's white, white fur and orange. So it's like a, I mean, how do you even come up with that? I mean, what's your process for coming up with a new scent? It it really depends. I mean, who's uh, thinking? I mean, you don't. Maybe you do, but like, I think I'm gonna put some white fur and orange with a hint of clove together and see what happens. I mean, how do you even come to that? Oh, a lot of trial and error, uh, experimentation. A, a lot of the oils we already have because they're in other products that we sell. So. You know, it's going through in our in our uh, clean room and smelling everything, putting the oils together, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Experiment. I get all of my employees to try it, see if they like it. I'm just curious, how do you decide when it's ready to come out with a new scent? Or I mean, because you have a lot now, right? And yeah. then you have to produce those. There's a lot of time, energy, and money that goes into that. Exactly. When do you just say, okay, that's enough right now, or so we need to create I, I, one? I really like our original eight scents, yeah. and we still offer that in the trial kit. Is the first eight. Uh, the newer ones, so we have El Barista, which is our coffee-scented one, yeah. and the Royal Knight, which is the Earl Grey tea. Um, those ones I we consider premium just because it's a lot more labor-intensive. We actually brew the Earl Grey tea and we brew the coffee in these products. Yeah. And then we, all, we, we have to buy the, the raw materials you know, to do that, all the tea and the, and the coffee yeah. to do that. So those are a little bit more expensive, so those aren't part of that normal line. So we still have our base eight. Um, we also have a new one that's called the Bushwhacker. And that one is like a specialty. It's a natural insect repellent. Is and it really? Have, oh, wow. Yep. Yeah, and it works really, really well. We have a, a lot of a lot Why is of it called the Bushwhacker? Uh, I I, it it was, just makes me think of WW. There was like the wrestlers. Yeah, the you know what? It's funny. Our customer, our customer was telling me about that after I launched it. I'd never even heard of them. Um, but, you know, when I was, I was trying to think of a new name for a scent, uh, something that was kind of humorous and, and catchy at the same time, and, you know, Every one of the scents, I try to the names, I try to correspond to what it's for. Right. So, like, ladies' man has a natural aphrodisiac in it. Um, you know, El Barista is the coffee one. You should put that on. It doesn't say that. It's I mean, for, well, the one I'm reading says lemon and vanilla. I didn't, yeah, well, I, I don't know that. The, the the aphrodisiac is it's a plant called uh, lang lang. It's yeah. a, a Japanese flower, and a lot of guys think that it smells floral. And you really don't get any of the floral smell to, to the ladies' man. So I, I left it out just because I, I want the description of the scent to be uh, as accurate as possible. Yeah. But if it did say natural aphrodisiac, you get more sales. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Um, it's the claims like that, too. You know, I try, I not, I try not to put any outlandish exactly, claims Exactly, yeah. It's, it's not something that I can prove or that I right. think that science You don't want to so. be in the gray area. I understand. Yeah. Um, really interesting. Uh, Charlie, and so how do you have you had to eliminate any scents or any products? Uh, yeah, we just had to do our, our first recall actually. Um, so one of our seasonal scents was called the Brewmaster, and we made it by actually brewing hops into our formula to make it smell like a, a beer without the alcohol, and then we added lemon and vanilla. And it was a huge hit, everyone loved it, everyone in our office loved it, and then summertime rolled around. And packages were sitting in people's mailboxes getting to 140 degrees. And if you can imagine an IPA sitting in a hot mailbox for six hours and then what it would smell like or taste like after that, that's what was happening in these products. So mm. Because everything's all natural. There's no preservatives in it or anything right, like that. Right, right. Um, under normal conditions, it was fine. But we were finding that when it was getting really, really hot inside people's mailboxes, it was turning like a skunk, skunky smell. Oh, just na- rename it the skunk. And you're fine. No, <laughs> uh, it was it was funny. People were like, "Oh man, this smells like weed." I was like, uh, it's, it's not. I promise. 
<laughs> um, what, you know, it, you obviously have had a huge upward trajectory. What yep. have been some of the challenges uh, or mistakes? Um, you probably don't have any of those, but. No, I have a ton. Yeah. Uh, hiring employees has been the biggest challenge. Hmm. F- finding the right people for the, for the right job, and especially at, you know, this, the, the skill level required to make these products and to, to pack and ship is not high. So uh, we, we offer more than minimum wage. But even then, it's um, it's difficult to find people that that think outside of the box and that have a really good head on their shoulders and have common sense. So um, finding finding those people at, the, at this pay rate has been a challenge. What were some of the positions after you and your wife helped you start the company, right? Yep. yep. Um, who, what did you hire for after the two? Uh, of you? So the very first one was just someone to help me make the product. Uh, and then a week later, I hired my second employee because as soon as I hired him to help me make the product, I was able to focus on going online and, and telling people about the free sample and, and marketing yeah. it online. So yeah, a week after I hired my first employee, I had to hire my second one just to keep up. And that was you know, ro- rolling right into uh, January after December. So I uh, hired the second guy to help me ship. And then I hired a third person also to help ship. And then uh, some rolling. So fourth and fifth were to help uh, make product. Uh, my sixth employee was my uh, friend Greg. So I offered him the job just because I needed. It was getting so big so fast. That I needed somebody that I could trust. I didn't need. I didn't really need somebody that knew what they're doing in business because the business is already you know going really really well. I needed someone that I could trust with our financials. Someone that I could trust with you know being there to run the business if if I had to be out because my wife was pregnant and with our first kid. So uh, yeah, he, he we brought him on. And it's been a really really big help. Just just having someone that is trustworthy to work with. So when you bring the first person on to help you make yep. it, yep. Do they have any experience? Are you looking for someone experienced, or what are you looking for? You, you can't really find someone that's experienced in making beard care products. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe in the cosmetics industry or something. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's trying to find someone that has already got that experience, especially in a small town. El Dorado Hills is, is, is a smaller town, so. Yeah. Um, and then what do you also, look for? Yeah, in the person. So I, I only have really one question. Like my uh, Greg, the guy that I hired, and now our general manager, um, yeah. they have a ton of questions asking hires. I only have one, yeah. and it's a math question. Okay. And I've actually I've actually found that uh, and it's a very simple question. I, I can tell you the question if you want, but I found that if people don't answer it correctly. They generally just don't have a really good head on their shoulders. Okay. And if they do answer it correctly, then they do. Okay. And I know that sounds silly, but it, it has been the one thing out of all the different questions we've asked. It has been the one that has held consistent. Interesting. That, you know, the, the guys that I've hired that didn't get it right, uh, they've been let go. Uh, you know, within within six months due to either really? performance, performance or attendance or you know one reason or another. Yeah. So, so are they allowed to use a calculator? No calculator. I. Uh, no, uh, no. If, no. If they okay. asked, if, if they asked, I would probably say yes okay. because it shows initiative. Like, can I use a calculator to help me out? I would much rather if I, if I'm if I hire someone to help me make these products, I would rather someone say, "Wait a second, let me grab a calculator and make sure this formula is correct." Instead of saying, "I think I can do this in my head. Let me just take a guess at it." Right. You know, and I, I I've had people tell me, "Okay, well, it's going to be you know the answer is between this number and this number," and I'm like. No, there's there's like one number I'm looking for here. So it's, do you want to reveal remedy. the question or do you want to keep it secret? Yeah. No, okay. No, I, I tell you guys. So I tell people, you know, you, you have a recipe or a formula that has three ingredients. So ingredients are A, B, and C. Right. The first ingredient calls for 10 ounces. Second ingredient calls for 50 ounces. Third ingredient calls for 100 ounces. Yeah. You put the third ingredient in first. You accidentally put in 150 ounces instead of 100. This is crazy. Yeah, I love this. I'm gonna give, say, I'm gonna write this down and give it to my my kindergartner. So go on, yeah. Yeah. So, so I say you pour 150 instead of 100 by accident because it happens sometimes. People put too much of, of something in there, you know, think that they're doing a different formula or something. So so if you, if you accidentally put in 150 instead of 100, what do you have to do to the other two so it's the same overall formula, right? And so if 100 is increasing by 50 percent to 150, you've got to increase the first two by 50 percent, and it. <laughs> It seems simple when you think about it, and if you take the time to like, okay, well, yeah, it's just a fifty percent. I make the numbers easy, you know, ten, fifty, and a hundred. Right. And uh, yeah, I would say the um, the amount of people that get it right is probably about thirty percent. So no matter what you're hiring for, do you give them that question, or is it yes, uh, no matter what, no matter what. 
Interesting. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. That's great. How did you handle 600 to 800 messages a day? <laughs> Little to no sleep. So the first year was absolutely insane. I mean, it was, it was more than 16-hour days. I, I wouldn't even drive. I would have my, have my wife drive because if I was not constantly responding to emails, constantly responding to messages and you know, working on the business, then I would feel overwhelmed. Yeah. And so I, just, I never, let it, I never let, it, let it get to that point because I know that if I feel overwhelmed, I tend to shut down. So I just was on it constant and yeah. it paid off. So hiring is a big challenge. What else has been with growing the business? Uh, I mean, keeping up with demand for the first, for the first year uh, just because I, I didn't take any loans out. I didn't take any kind of investments. Wow, you bootstrapped uh, that. Wow. Yeah. So, and, and I didn't really have any, any savings when I got out of the military. Uh, my wife was a nurse and she had just joined the Navy, so she got a bonus to join the Navy. So we had, you know, a couple thousand in our savings. But I, uh, the, the biggest challenge was was keeping everything afloat and ordering in as small quantities as I could. So, you know, like, okay, well, we're growing right now, but what happens if I spend $10,000 on this raw material and all of a sudden the sales stop? Yeah. And, then, and then I'm stuck with this for over a year and the material goes bad and then I'm just out all this money. So, yeah. Um, it took a while for me to get over that fear that the business was going to fail. Um, and once I got over that fear and I, and I had the cash reserves after the first Christmas, I was able to start ordering in, in, in bigger quantities. Yeah. So now it's not so much an issue. But yeah, the, the first year, I mean, there was, there, was, there was times where we were three, four, five days uh, behind on getting orders out. And I strive to have orders out same day. So yeah. if like right now, right now, if people order before 3 p.m., uh, it shipped out same day. Yeah. Because it's capital intensive. I mean, even if you're yeah. growing and doing well, it's even more capital intensive. Yes. Yeah. And then also trying to manage you know, how you're spending your advertising budget because that's a big part of it. It's, uh, it's kind of scary because you feel like, okay, you know, I, I put all this money into advertising and it did really, really well. And then you feel like if you start cutting back on your advertising that your sales are also going to flounder and you don't want that to happen. So uh, – yeah, it's 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 scary, and you end up you know this this year I think we put a little more money into advertising than, than we should have, um, but at the same time we'll see how it pays off for Christmas because it could be that you know we put all that money into advertising and people are just waiting to buy it for gifts. Where do you focus? Like Facebook, Google Ads, Facebook. Or just Facebook? Facebook. Facebook free samples. So for the first year and a half, the only advertising I did was that same picture of the free sample. Mm -hmm. I never changed it. I never <laughs> did. Did they give it working? It. I'm not touching it, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I would target different, different demographics to see what would work and what was you know, more cost effective. Um, but the ad itself didn't, didn't change for, for a year and a half. Now, where else can people find you? You're on Amazon too, right? Yes. Yeah, we're on Amazon Prime now, um, although I prefer people order from the site, obviously. Yeah. And we actually uh, most of the time get products to people faster than Amazon can, um, especially if they're on the West Coast. But yeah, on Amazon. product like that, Charlie, how does it work? Because Amazon takes a large amount of fees. Yes, they right. Do. So yep. how does he, how do you make that work with its I, I, you know, smaller products? I pretty much just consider it like a wholesale account because they they tell you they only take you know fifteen percent or whatever, but then they have you know all these other fees. And yeah. when we're selling products, they're only a majority of our products are between twelve dollars and twenty dollars. Right. And so these little you know dollar pick and pack fee, dollar fee here, dollar fee there. All of a sudden, they're taking everything. Yeah, forty percent instead of fifteen percent. So yeah, I I just consider it a wholesale account where we just send them a giant a giant shipment and then they sell it. So yeah, it's uh. But once we, I, I will say once we actually got on Prime versus just being on Amazon, and that just happened about two months ago, uh, we saw about a two hundred and fifty percent increase in sales. Wow. So it was it was pretty significant. Uh, they, they took you know an additional ten percent or so from our bottom line. But yeah, they, they really, really uh, boosted our sales for Amazon. So do you do Amazon ads also, or is it just too costly? I, I've, I've never been bothered. I, I always, you know, maybe I should try doing the, the Amazon ads, but there was just so much going on and the business was growing so fast yeah. that, and, and I was still trying to learn how to do the face, Facebook and, and Google advertising and everything else that I just kind of let it do its own thing and figured that, you know, if, if people saw ads elsewhere, that they would just go on their Amazon and see if it was there and buy there because they want to buy on Amazon. So it seemed to work, and we had um, decent sales on Amazon. We were doing between seven and ten thousand uh, a month. Yeah, in sales, and I was like, okay, that's you know, that's great. Just and that's little... hands off because they're shipping it for you. Actually, right? so that one before we were on Prime, uh, oh. we had to ship. But you know, I, the orders rolled through. We have a, um, a, a 
an app that brings all of our different platforms together. So if we sell on our regular website, because we have badassbeardcare.com, we also have badassbeardclub.com, right. which is a subscription-based site. Yeah. And then we have Amazon, and then we have uh, individual sales channels, you know, if we sell in the office or whatever. So we have an app that brings everything together and makes it all one. So I couldn't tell the difference between an Amazon order and a regular order. Mm. So it was all just under one, one category. Yeah, and I want to talk about the club as okay. well. Um, but... Are there any, so you have the kiosk, you have the badassbeardcare.com, obviously, um, yep. and the club, and then Amazon. Any other channels that you recommend uh, people check out if they're selling physical products or that you like? Yeah, we're in uh, between 20 and 30 barbershops and health stores across okay. the U.S. Nice. Um, but it's, it's hard to keep an updated list of who currently has product because a lot of times they'll order yeah. product and then it sells out pretty quickly and then they don't, they don't reorder right away. So uh, it's... <laughs> It's tough telling people exactly where a certain product is at a certain time. Yeah. But yeah, uh, at, at, any, at any given point, probably between 20 and 30 uh, barbershops across country have wow. products. You know, it's interesting. So I do a lot of research and I was reading your Amazon reviews. You have some really stellar Amazon reviews. Yeah, yeah. And I'm really proud that none of them are paid for. Uh, we've mm -hmm. never offered anything free on Amazon in exchange for a review. Uh, all of our reviews, in fact, That's are amazing. Yeah, real reviews. Yeah. Um, I don't, have you seen our, our Facebook reviews? No, just the Amazon. I didn't see the Facebook. So, I, mean, I looked Facebook, at your Facebook page, like your yeah. actual fan page. Yeah. I, tr I try to tell people, if, you, if you're going to look at a company's reviews, try to look at their Facebook reviews because people have e easy access to leave your review immediately after interacting. Hmm. So if a company turns off the reviews feature on Facebook, it's probably because it's not that great. Hmm. And Facebook doesn't allow you to moderate your reviews. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. So um, I think right now on Facebook we have... A little over 2,000 uh, five-star reviews, and I think we have 16 one-star, but a majority of the one-stars are like, oh, my kid pressed one star. I don't know how to change it. Yeah, what, or, are, what are some f some feedback you've gotten from customers throughout the years that's helped you shape the product and the business? So the very first month or so, um, customers were saying that all the products smelled the same to them. Mm. They all smelled wildly different to me, but they had the same base formula in it. They had some tea tree in it. So that real top note of tea tree, everyone thought everything overpowered it for them. Yeah, well, it, it didn't even overpower it. It's just when you have stronger um, scents that are mixed in with other scents, yeah, that scent will come out first, but also evaporates fastest. So like when we're at the mall kiosk, obviously people smell it directly out of the container, and then I'll apply it. I'll put a drop on the finger and have their fingers rub together, and just the act of them creating a friction on their fingers evaporates that top scent, and then they get the real scent of the product. Mm. So you know, if there was a ton, if there's a ton of tree, tea tree, it would have overpowered it, but it's a very very small amount. It's just because it's right there on top. Yeah, you know, managing all this is a huge feat, right? So, what kind yeah. of software and apps do you use to manage the business? I will, I will tell you, ShipStation has been a lifesaver. Okay. Um, so that's the that's the app that we use to bring all of our different cha channels together. Uh, before we had ShipStation, we actually had to manually print every single label. We had to transfer the address from you know our uh, website over to USPS.com, whatever we're using to print labels, and uh, it was really tedious and time-consuming. I, I had one employee that all he did all day was print shipping labels, and then you know it was and that was before we got really really big to the point we are now. So when we when we transferred over to ShipStation, it brought everything into one, and we can actually print like uh, last December. I think we had about sixteen hundred orders in one day. It was our, our biggest day. Wow. And we printed all sixteen hundred orders in about two hours. Wow! And you know, through ship station. And that's, before that would have taken how long? A uh, couple of days. Wow! Yeah, and and that two hours. So what we do uh, to reduce error rate. So another thing is we I keep a really close eye on our on our packaging error rate, and I I strive to be under one percent. Um, it doesn't matter to me how long it really takes my my employees to actually pack the package. I just want to make sure that it's right. Yeah. So we, we, we strive for under 1% error rate, and in order to achieve that, we use ShipStation to um, filter and, and group packages together. So let's say that, you know, uh, for the club especially, it makes it easy. We have all of, you know, one tier we can group together and just print those labels and just print those invoices and then give it to one employee. So that employee knows all they're packing right now is this one type of product. Yeah. So there's less chance of them grabbing something by accident. They, yeah, it kind of is clustered, so it reduces the error. Yeah, that and, makes sense. Now, and now we also have three different shipping methods. So we have uh, USPS First Class, USPS Priority, 
and we have a USPS DHL um, e-commerce partnership as a third option. Mm -hmm. And so we have to sort all three of those. So instead of manually going through and trying to sort when they come to pick up, we just short, sort it in the ship station, and as they pack it, they just put it in different bins. Yeah. So you ship station. That's big. What else yeah. do you? What do you use for the uh, the platform? What do you use? So uh, it, we have multiple. So badassbeardcare.com is big commerce. Hmm. Badassbeardclub.com is Shopify. And the really? Reason why we did that's that, interesting. Yeah, yeah I, w I would have loved them to, to have been on the same platform. Um, but at the time, big commerce didn't have a recurring orders app that would work with how yeah. I want it to work. And yeah. Shopify. You're featured on Bold. Bold yep. blog because yes. of the Shopify app that you exactly. use, right? Exactly. The recurring subscription. Yeah, and it's, it was hard finding a uh, subscription service that was as customizable as I wanted it to be because, you know, if you have a, uh, you know, shirt of the month club or whatever, you can get a different shirt every month and every person is going to need the same amount of shirts, right? They can use one shirt a month. Right. But with our products, someone that's just starting to grow their beard doesn't need oil sent every month. Versus someone that's got a three foot beard, they have to might customize it. it. Yeah. yeah, they might need it every every few weeks. So, uh, the current customization of the Bold app that we have allows for anywhere from every one week all the way up to every six months. And they can also go into their own dashboard. This is another big one because customer service. You know, we have two two employees now dedicated customer service. So it's it's expensive keeping that up and making sure that you know our brand image is maintained. Yeah. And that our customers are happy. So uh, getting. As few customer service related you know, calls, emails as possible was, was uh, ideal. And this app allows us to have the customer log in to their dashboard and they can update their address. They can update their card information. They can skip shipments. They can cancel. Yeah. So uh, it really relieves the, uh, the customer service issues yeah. involved with the subscription platform. So any other apps? So you use Shop for the club, you use Shopify and then the Bold app, which is the recurring subscription. Yeah, um, so we, we use two of Bolts. Yeah. So the recurring subscriptions, um, and then we also use their customer pricing app. And we don't do it to change pricing. What we do is that app allows us to hide products from people that haven't purchased a tier yet. So when you first go to badassbeardclub.com, all you see is our tiers, what you can get you know, sent automatically. But once you buy one of those tiers, uh, it, ta it tags you in the customer pricing app as a club member, and then you see all of our products. So it's so it's, some it's kind of whom cool. are held back, sort of like VIP ish, for only exactly. the club members. Yeah, well, all the products. So when so the club, all you see is those tiers, but then once you join, we have about six different products they see, and they're all discounted. So they get ten percent mm. off of regular oil bomb wax and wash, twenty percent off of accessories, and thirty percent off of apparel. How do you get people onto the club? Because I know I want to hear about why you first decided to do this because there was a point in time when you're like okay you first decided to and then how you actually got people on to to join the club you know it was kind of a spur of the moment thing but let me show you what really launched it yeah get out, get out of pocket real quick yeah so it was it was kind of a spur of the moment thing i was like you know what a lot of these people say oh you know i I'd, if i buy you know eight things at one time can i get a discount and i'm like well you can, and I'd be happy to give you a discount, but eight bottles of oil is going to last you two years, and the products can go bad. Right. And I was like, what, what if I offer a discount uh, for you agreeing just to get stuff sent regularly? And so I was like, you know, that, that sounds like a good idea. I should probably try to look into something like that. And then I was like, you know what? I, I need to create something where it's more than just you know, a subscription. Like People have to feel a connection to the product. Um, I have to have a, a platform where I can give everyone new information. So we started, you know, a Facebook page dedicated to the club members, and then I designed. So I don't know if you can see it. Yes, I see certified badass. Yeah. Beer. So that is our membership card. Every membership card gets laser and laser engraved with the customer's member number. So it's a little bit of cu customization to it. Uh, so they, hold they, it up again for a second. Let me see. So what? Because obviously you spent a lot of time and attention on this. So is it just something that, that goes in their wallet? Exactly. So that's the other cool part. This sits in their wallet, and our brand name is what's visible from on top of their uh, credit card slot. So what's that space for? Why is there that that the uh, yeah bottle opener? Oh, it's a bottle opener. I gotcha. Yep. So it fits in their wallet. So they always have their, their member card on them, and it's also a bottle opener. So they're never without a bottle opener. And this thing weighs about four ounces. What's it, it made of? Iron, solid iron. Oh wow. Yep. 
solid iron, uh, powder coated black, and then laser laser inscribed. You you pull out all the stops. Yeah. So you know it's, but it's stuff like that where where customers feel like okay th this company is not in it just to make a buck. They actually want to make the customers happy, and then they tell all their friends. You know it's. And and and, that, and that's my philosophy. C customer customer service is number one. You got to make sure your customers are happy, especially when you have an e-commerce business, because you know <laughs> social media is not forgiving. You make one misstep, right. and uh, all of a sudden it's you know the end of your business as you know it. So cu customer service, making sure that no matter no matter what, it doesn't matter what's happened, our, our customers walk away happy. So you know. So initially to get people on, what's the what have you found to be the best type of offering? For them, to for the club or for yeah the for the club team? yeah. So actually, we really haven't advertised the club very much. Uh, what I did was I just put on our our regular website badassbeardcare.com uh, a little description of what the club does, and we have a link there, and then that'll take them to the club site. And there's a video that plays that kind of explains what the club is and everything. Um, but yeah, at first it was just social media posts letting people know the the picture of the of the membership card really garnered a lot of attention. Hmm. So I was like, "Hey guys, you know, check it out. These, you know, the membership cards. Who who wants one? Who's interested in joining the club?" And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it was like a, a viral post. Everyone's like, "This is so cool! The best, you know, coolest card I've ever seen. <laughs> I want to join." And so uh, the day we launched, we had 600 people sign up. Wow! And that was with no advertising. That was just me posting on our Facebook saying, "Hey, I'm I'm going to do this, and here's the card. Who, who wants to try it out?" So. Uh, it was a trip, and then we had people that wanted specific card numbers. So this, this is a kind of cool. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, they're like, oh, you know, I, I want you know, as silly as it sounds, I want card number four twenty, or you know, I, I want card uh, number one or number five thousand or, or whatever it was, or seventeen seventy six was a popular one. Uh, so it was nine eleven. So uh, you know, all the, so we have a lot of bets and stuff. So all these card numbers, people are like, oh, I want that card number, and the first per, the very first person, I was like, oh yeah, I, I can, I can probably do that for you. I can, I can give you that card number. The very next comment was, "Well, I want that card number two. and I was like, "Oh, let the, put it on eBay, right?" It, the bidding it, starts. Exactly what I did. Is that what you did? Exactly what I did. I put all the numbers up on eBay, and we rate. And I said, "You know, whatever, you, whatever you bid, um, every, all the money goes to charity." So we donated to uh, Higher Heroes USA, nice. but we raised forty five hundred dollars from people bidding on the member cards. That's amazing. Yeah, it was it was a trip. We had people paying, you know, three hundred, four hundred dollars for a specific number. It was it was really cool. Wow, that's amazing, Charlie. Um, what other? So you use why um, keep big commerce? Um, I, they have really good service. Uh -huh. It's just uh, too much of a pain to switch. Yeah, it, it would be a pain to switch. It would be time consuming to switch. And I mean, I'm I'm happy with the way that everything there works. So I'm, yeah. I'm also happy with Shopify too. I mean, both right. both pl platforms are great. Big You're like a poster just, child for both of them, right? Yeah. <laughs> Big Commerce just, just upped their rates recently, um, and I'm hoping that the increased rates means also in the near future uh, more free apps or you know more capabilities yeah. that yeah. we previously didn't have to, you know had to pay for. But uh, we'll see how that plays out. I'm, I'm going to give them another year and, and, and see what happens. But yeah, yeah bo bo both platforms are great. We even uh, we started on GoDaddy, so the GoDaddy My Simple Store. I launched it in like two hours, and that's that's how the, the start was the site we started with. But uh, yeah, it's called My Simple Store for a reason. It's meant for people to get you know a couple orders a day, and once we started getting a hundred orders a day or more, the capabilities just weren't there. And you switched but, to Big Commerce at that point. Yeah, but anyone else that's out there that wants to check out Big Con or uh, GoDaddy, that you know has a smaller site, it, it's really, yeah. really expensive yeah. and really user friendly. So if, if people yeah. are looking just to jump in and they yeah. don't have any experience, yeah, uh, that'll give you the experience you need to start growing. Yeah, I, mean, I think Shopify and Big Commerce are pretty affordable. Is their basic plan right? I mean, the basic plan. The the basic plan, yes. But you know, we have so many orders now. That's that's the other thing that sucks. A lot a lot of these different companies, they kind of rope you in. They give you oh. You know, here's like a, a zero cost to entry or you know minimal cost to entry, but as soon as you start getting sales and you become dependent you're on the that enter service, right, yeah. all of a sudden they're like, oh, well now you're in a higher tier. Now you're in a higher tier. So uh, yeah, for big commerce, I think we're spending a little over ten thousand dollars a year to stay on big commerce. Yeah. Versus on you know Shopify, I think it's like one hundred and fifty a year, and on GoDaddy it was even cheaper than that. One hundred and fifty per year. That's it. Or I'm 
I'm sorry, or, uh, 150, 150 a month. 150 a month, oh, gotcha. 150 a month. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, and, yeah I was going to say, what other apps do you find valuable? I mean, ShipStation, Bold apps, anything else that you yeah. use to run your business? Yeah, so uh, Hootsuite for our social media yeah. because we have so many different social media accounts. We have multiple Facebook accounts, uh, Twitter, multiple Instagram accounts, Snapchat, and uh, Google Plus and all, all these different channels. So having everything in one spot so we don't have to swap back and forth you know, between all these different windows is really, really helpful. Yeah. 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 Amazing what you've done, Charlie, really. Um, and I want to go back to some of the history, right? We talked okay. about, obviously, badass beard care. And, but tell me about where you were in, around 9-11, cause that was a big turning point for you. Yeah, uh, 9-11, see when I, when I found out what happened, I was actually on my way to school, my mom was driving me to school, so I was 14 at the time. You were in California? Yeah, I was okay. in California, in, in Santa Cruz, and uh, yeah, it was, you know, I'd never experienced anything like that before, I think that the only other event that stands out in my mind as being like, you know, an event that I remember through my childhood as a traumatic thing was a uh, Columbine shooting. That was big when we were a kid because it was the first like big school mass shooting. And so right. that stuck with me. But yeah, 9-11, I mean, all, all my family um, served. My, my dad was army. Uh, grandpa was air force. My godfather was Navy. And then, yeah, I just kind of felt the call to serve. And actually on my 17th birthday, I signed. So, so three yeah. years later, is when uh, you ten, ten, uh, ten years later. Oh, ten years. Uh, I was for ten years. What did you? No, I mean after nine eleven. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. three years later. Um, exactly. What did you want to be when you grew up? Good question. So in my heart, I wanted to be a business owner. I've always, you did. I've, I've always, I've always, I've told my mom since I was like ten years old that my <laughs> life plan was that I was going to own my first house by, by the time I was twenty one. Hmm that I was going to be a millionaire by the time I was 30, and then I was going to really? retire by the, I was going to retire by the time I was 32, and then I was going to do this by starting my own business, because I, I loved selling things when I was a kid. I was always the top seller for my Cub Scout units. Uh, when our school would have sales drives, I was always you know, far and away the, the, the yeah. highest seller for those stuff. And I, just, I just really enjoyed uh, selling things. My mom also had a lot of small businesses that she what tried. What did she do? Uh, so uh, Mary Kay, most recently, like yeah. Mary Kay Cosmetics. Yeah, yeah. Um, before that, she owned a martial arts shop. Really, a martial arts yeah. shop? Yeah. Both, so, did you uh, grow up doing martial arts? Yeah, her and I are both black belts. Wow. So uh, she she opened up a martial arts shop. Um, she did Tupperware for a while. Um, That's so some, interesting, um, Charlie. So martial arts to Tupperware, right? Yeah. So, well, it start started Tupperware, then went to martial arts, okay. then went to Mary Kay, and then she was also working other jobs at the same time. So there's times where she had three or four jobs going at one time. And then I would be the one, you know, when I was 12 years old, man in the cash register at the martial arts shop. So, so the badass is really for your mom. That's who's named yeah. after, right? Yeah, she's she, she's she's definitely a badass. She uh she she did a lot when I was growing up to make sure that things weren't too crazy. So you saw that, and your mom had a passion for business and entrepreneurship, yep. Yep. Um, and that's what you, growing up, that's, that's what you wanted to do. That's what I really wanted to do, um, but at the same time, as I was a realist, and I knew that most businesses didn't take off, and I didn't have any capital to start a business. Yeah. I didn't have any experience, and uh, my my high school grades made it so that I couldn't get into any colleges that I wanted to get into. Oh, really? I had a, I had a .81 GPA. .81. Uh, yeah, straight straight D's and an F. So you seem like a real conscientious person. How does that happen? <laughs> um. I don't know. I was going through a lot uh, in high school, and you know, my, my dad passed away uh, sophomore mm. year, mm. and you know, was sick before that. Wow. Our, our house burnt down. Uh, grandpa and grandma, who Jeez. both lived with me growing up, uh, passed all around the same time. So, uh, at school, that's you know, horrible. I, you know, yeah, it's life. It shit happens. Sorry, I don't know if I can curse or not. Yeah, so bad. You but, can. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a curse in your name, so we've already said badass. So. Uh, okay. You know, it's also in the Bible. So. <laughs> you know, I'm fine I mean, with it. There's no, there's yeah, no, it's, it's no qualms. Cool. It's so around that black. time, a yeah. lot happened at once. Yeah, it was a lot happening at once, and, and like I said, going to school, I would ace my tests, I would do all the classwork, but then going back home, 
uh, I really didn't want to do homework, you know, with, with the atmosphere that was going on. My mom, my, my mom was working all the time, so she wasn't there to make sure that I was doing it. You know, she's yeah. a high school kid that was, you know, depressed and alone and and all the stuff going on. So I wasn't doing any of the homework at all. And yeah. that school uh, homework was forty percent of your grade. So mm. I had literally a zero for my homework, and I was acing every test. Mm. Um, I even went. Uh, they had like an awards dinner for the California State Go- uh, Golden State exam. And I, I scored in the top three percentile wow. of, of the state. So, you know, they had like an awards dinner <laughs> that I was attending. And yet, uh, like the day before, they called me to the principal's office to ask if I needed to uh, be held back or, you know, bumped down to special classes. Mm. I was like, you, you got to be kidding me, man. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm scoring this well on these tests. I'm just not doing homework here. So. It's it, it it got uh, tiresome fast. I ended up going on to independent study. Have you ever heard of independent study? Yeah, but I don't know exactly. I mean, ever it's different for everyone, right? I mean, yeah. So yeah. Was, uh, you meet once a week with a teacher. Um, she assigns all your your work for the week, hmm. and then you bring it back. She grades it, assigns you new stuff. So I did that for a few weeks, and uh, you know the work that she was assigning, I was I was completing in a day. Yeah. I'd just sit down, and spend spend eight hours, and just knock it out. Yeah. So after a few weeks, I was like, you know, can you can you give me like the few weeks worth of homework, and I'll do it. And so she agreed to it, mm. and I flew through independent study. So you know, <laughs> uh, it was supposed to be two years of independent study, and I ended up doing six months of independent study wow. when I graduated. So I graduated just after my 16th birthday. Really? Yep. Holy cow! Yeah. How do you get through that? Is like a kid, and all that stuff is like exploding around you. How did you get through that time? Uh, just you know, one, one day mean, at a time. I mean, is it some people like an outlet in sports? Some people. I mean, what was your outlet at the time? Fishing. I fishing. love to go fishing. Yeah. So we we had a lake really close to our house, um, and I I would go there almost daily, and fish. Um, and then yeah, as I got a little older, you know, past sixteen, like sixteen, seventeen, my outlet was not as uh, healthy. <laughs> right. <laughs> But you know, uh, that's, and that's that's one of the reasons why I decided on my 17th birthday. I, I saw what was going on with my friends. You know, I lived in a in a in a little mountain town where, you know, drugs were kind of rampant and alcohol use of minors was pretty rampant. Hmm. And I saw that my friends were just you know they were getting arrested and not doing anything with their lives and just I, I didn't want that. And I knew that you know I wanted to go to college, you know, and and do something in my life, but couldn't afford it and didn't have the grades for it. So the military hmm. offered a. Uh, you know, a way to do all that and serve at the same time. So, like I said, be, being a realist, I was like, you know, I, I don't think that I'm going to be able to start a business uh, on my own, you know, just out of the gate. So, I wanted to become a police officer. So, that, that was the goal. I was, I was going to be in the military for four years, uh, get out, become a police officer, and, and take some classes at night to start doing that. And then, when I retired as a police officer, then the plan was to start a business. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you had a set plan from a young age. It's impressive. Yeah. 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 And the economy took a dump in 2007, so I joined in 2005, and in 2007, 2008, the economy went down, and 2008 was when my contract was supposed to be up, and police departments were laying people off instead of hiring people. Right. So I, I stayed on uh, you know, for a while longer. In the military. And, yep, and yeah. then I ended up having a, a really bad ankle injury that sidelined me, so I got medically discharged after 10 years. So that was kind of like, okay, I, I got a few months to figure out what I'm going to do. Um, I got accepted in the Sheriff's Academy. And I got a conditional job offer that as long as I completed the academy, they would hire me on. But uh, one of the friends that I grew up with, it's kind of an embarrassing story, but uh, he... That's uh, the best he, kind of story. He came to my wedding, which was two months before I was supposed to get out, and decided that he was going to go smoke some weed in the parking lot on the military base. And so the MPs found him and, and caught him and then found a bunch of individually wrapped bags of weed in his trunk. And so uh, the working theory was that I brought him there to sell weed to oh. my friends at the wedding. Oh, jeez. Yeah, <laughs> which was not the case at all. Um, he wasn't even really invited. He was a plus one of another friend just because I knew that he tends to not do smart things. So he, he was there anyways, and it happened. They involuntarily extended me for another two months uh, just to investigate. And oh. they, they, found, they found me on no misconduct and nothing wrong. Right. But I missed the sheriff's academy. So then I had oh, yeah. five months to kill until the next academy started. So I started going to school and then you know, started growing my beard out. And it all happened within about a month. I mean, it just yeah. 
you know, it, it went it went quick. I was like, I want to grow my beard out. And a few weeks later, I was like, ah, oh, this product sucks. I want to try to make my own. And then a few weeks later, it was, oh, I'm going to put it online. It happened so, so it was, quickly. Was, yeah, because my my last day in the military was October 9th. So you know, from October 9th, getting out, and all of a sudden, December, we had thirty thousand dollars in sales on our website. So it was, I mean, it's amazing. Really, really quick. Yep. Charlie, you were in the military for ten years, right? So, yep. tell me a crazy war story, military story. What what was one of the crazier? Unless it's top secret. Do you, do you want gory? Do you want funny? What, what kind of story do you want? Either or. Whatever comes to mind for you is was one of your top two favorite stories. Top two. Favorite. Maybe maybe gory and a funny one. Okay, I'll I'll do one of each. Yeah. So uh, the funny one is my. Uh, I was stationed in Key West, Florida, and we did all the, the drug and mi- migrant sm- uh, smuggling operations down there, and I was the, the boarding officer for that. But they sent me to EMT school so that I could be the EMT for the ship. Hmm. And then about a week after I came back, uh, we were all at the strip club, and this stripper uh, collapsed on stage, and I saved her. And so they called me Dr. save ho he- <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> You're on the news. Oh my god! Well, so the the command refused to give me an award um, for you know any kind of life saving award because they felt that the situation would bring discredit upon the service. It's it's sort of a double edged sword, right? It you is. Save someone, is. but where were you at the time when you saved someone? <laughs> so uh, they they didn't get me an award or anything like that. But but when I left my departing plaque. Um, it had a, the nickname Dr. Seba on it. So, so were I, there crazy wedding speeches? Like did people actually tell that story at your wedding? Or did they refrain from embarrassing you? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping that uh, no one from my wedding sees this interview because <laughs> they, they don't know about it. Your wife does. That's all that matters. So. Yeah, she, okay. she, she, she knows it. Okay. Um, and then see a... Uh, well, thank you for saving someone. No matter who it is, That you know, that's that's the important thing. Yeah. So I get... I get Two horror stories. Uh, one end bad, one end good. So, uh, do you remember the the earthquake that happened in, in Dominican Republic that caused you know the whole the tsunami and everything to collapse and yeah. it was just a disaster? So we were actually on the island when the earthquake hit. Oh my god! Because you know we're stationed out in Key West and we're doing all the, the migrant operations and smuggling operations and we caught a couple of drug smugglers and we're bringing them back to uh, uh, Domrep. As far as Haiti, or the quake happened, so we're bringing back Domrep, which is the other half of the same island. So we're in um, Domrep and uh, Port Call, so we're all drinking and sitting inside this hot tub, and all of a sudden it's like, "Hey, do you, do you guys feel that?" <laughs> and uh, about an hour later, we got an emergency call, get back to the ship, get underway. So we get underway, and uh, you know, all these all these Haitians are trying to flee, you know, just, just get away from the island. You know, the whole country is in chaos, and now it's time to try to make a break for it. Yeah. So uh, we found a 35-foot sailboat with 216 people on board. Wow. And uh, they were literally people just stacked on top of people, stacked on top of people, laying on top of each other. And uh, there was an infant on board, and the mom wrapped the uh, life vest, like cable, around his neck and ended up accidentally suffocating him. Oh, so, my gosh. Yeah. But uh, we went over there in our, our small boat, uh, Got on, got got the baby unresponsive. Uh, did CPR, and we actually brought him back. Wow! So that's amazing. That that was the the happy one, and ended good. Yeah. Uh, the other one, we had uh, some migrant smugglers that were going from Cuba to Florida, and uh, one of the migrants got knocked down while we're chasing them on the back on the back of the boat that we're chasing, and they didn't stop, and they really choppy seas. So this guy's head was just. Bound, bound, oh bound man! For about forty-five minutes, and so by the time we stopped them and got on board, uh, his, he was just mush. Oh Nothing my, happened. that's horrible. Yeah. So you've seen some crazy things. Yeah, it was. I, so I was, I was only two years in my career when I was in Key West, and those was, was a crazy two years. So I'm gonna I'm gonna transition back to badass beard care, but I okay. thank you for telling some of those war stories because I knew you'd have yeah. some crazy ones. I did not expect you reviving a stripper as one of the, the stories, but um, <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't have either. Um, but I want to know how you went from you initially. You did these small batches and producing yep. it. How did you go from that to producing it at more of a scale? So when we first started making it, everything was getting melted down in like a small double boiler on a stove. 
Um, so we were only making about 50 ounces of product at a time. Yeah. And then so once we had the capital built up just before last Christmas, so right about the same, same time that we transitioned over to ShipStation to, to help there, um, we invested in this candle making machine. So we can do 3,000 ounces at a time now instead of 50 ounces. Mm. So we, uh, we can make a much larger scale and thank goodness because like I said, as, as sales kept increasing, we really needed that. Otherwise, we would have been SOL. What's the hardest part about the manufacturing and packaging side of things? Like getting it from the like oil into the bottles or labeling? What, what seems to be the most challenging? Um, honestly, I think it's just finding the right employees to get it there. Yeah, because the, the process in itself is not challenging. Um, the, the challenging part comes in trusting someone else to duplicate this product that you've created. Mm -hmm. So an, another reason for that math question is just, you know, we, we have people that you, you hire these guys, and it's you'd think that putting a label in the very center of a product would be common sense, and they do it every time. But then you go out there and you look at it, and half of them are like, you know, the labels are are halfway on the tin and sliding off or whatever. So. It, it, it's just it's just been finding employees that have the attention to detail and that really care about what they're doing. Yeah, I think that's the biggest part. If, yeah. if they care, I, I tell everyone treat you know every every product we make, every package we send, treat it as if you're making it for a family member as a gift or that you're sending it to a family member as a gift. So you know you don't want to just throw stuff in a bag. Um, you you don't want to just you know scramble some ingredients together and call it good. Yeah. So that's that's been the hardest yeah. part. Trey, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I have one last question yeah. I always ask since it's Inspired Insider. I always ask, um, what's been the lowest moment business-wise? Um, and then what's been the proudest moment business-wise for you? The lowest? I haven't had very many low moments in the business so far. Um, again, I mean, it, it's funny. Every, just about every challenge that I've faced so far has been related to employees. Mm. Just you know, finding good help. So we had we had a, a guy actually. I don't I don't want to say his name or anything. Yeah, we don't have to out him here now. Uh, he was a really good employee. Um, like you know, he started out as just kind of a seasonal help and and just proved himself to be really valuable to the company. And then went through some you know some bad personal stuff. Yeah. And it was like a switch. You know, yeah. all of all of a sudden it was just attitude and showing up late. And then just recently, in the last few weeks, uh, three days straight where no call, no show, didn't didn't tell us, didn't tell his family, didn't tell anybody, just disappeared for three That's days. Scary. And you know, coming into the holiday season, I really need reliable people. Right. And so it was a very very tough call to make, especially because I, I like him, yeah. and he was he was a great worker. We have these uh, competitions between our employees because a lot of the tasks get tedious. So we have, you know, uh, twice a day there's a contest where everyone sits down and they all compete to try to do something the fastest. And if they win, they get a point. And at the end of the week, the person with the most points gets a $25 gift card. You know, second place gets a $10 gift card. So he actually won last week. Yeah. And then just no call, no show, three days in a row after that, and I, I had to fire him. Wow. And it, it was like, a really tough call to make. He was a good worker. I really liked him, but it comes just down to – being consistent. Did you? What did he say? He he disagreed with my decision, but understand understood why I was doing it. And like I said, I I didn't I didn't want to, you know, dealing yeah. with 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 employees and having having to fire is probably the hardest part. I, I like people. Yeah. You know, I like to make I like to make people happy. I'm I'm customer service focused. You know, that's 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 the the main the main focus for business, making sure people are happy. So to have a guy that I personally enjoy hanging out with. And that was a stellar employee. It's a tough all decision. Sudden, yeah, all of a sudden, just going, you know, flipping a switch and having to make that decision right before the holidays. You know, if, if this was summertime, I might have had a little more leeway, but I got to have people in there that I know are going to be there. Otherwise, yeah. the business is yeah. yeah. All so, hands on deck, no pun intended, yeah. right? And then the yeah. proudest moment, I've had a lot of proud moments, man. Um, so our biggest our biggest day in sales uh, was last December, and we broke fifteen thousand dollars in sales in a day. Wow! And that was a, a a really proud moment. I felt like at that moment, you know, I'd, I'd kind of made it. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was a really really proud moment, and uh, yeah, I mean, just every every day th things make me proud. You know, I, I see the way that, that our customers talk about our products or talk about our company, yeah. and we have like a, a very loyal fan base. People that like our products 
love our products. They yeah. love the company. They love what we stand for, and they tell everyone they know about it. So just seeing that daily yeah. makes me proud constantly. Yeah. And talk about your wife's role in the company yeah. a little bit. So uh, she was really, really awesome, especially for the first month. Um, cause I'd be up, you know, all night talk, talking to people, trying, trying to get people to try the products, trying to find vendors to make our accessories or our apparel. Um, I, I'd all of like all of our accessories or combs and stuff I designed myself. So I'd stand up all night doing all that stuff. And then she, uh, was a RN, a registered nurse. So she was working 12 hour days. So she would get up at four o'clock in the morning, right about the time I went to bed. Mm. She'd get up, get up at four o'clock in the morning and start printing the orders so that when I woke up, I didn't have to go to the computer and sit down and try to do all that. I could get up and pack the orders and then go start making products. So wow. for the first few months, she, she you know, in our off time, bless her, you know, 12-hour shifts as a nurse is not easy. Yeah. But uh, she was helping just with the grunt work. And then uh, then she got pregnant and then she said she couldn't stand the smells and she kicked me out of the house. So she was, <laughs> she, she, she was instrumental in, in uh, making this no longer a home-based business. Right. Um, and then she kind of stepped back for a while as the business grew. And then once we got to the point where I needed to hire, you know, someone for HR, she came back in. Um, you know, she, she she had her son, so she's now working a lot less as a nurse. Now she's the HR director. She handles all the, the payroll, taxes, and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Charlie, thank you. This has been yeah. awesome. Everyone should check out badassbeardcare.com. Anywhere else they should check out on the internet. There's the badass beard care mascot. Yeah, that's, that's her dog. Our wife, Ashley, wants to say hi. So, interview? Okay. Yeah, like, real, real quick. We need the the, per, the real brains behind the operation. Yeah, right? Uh, no. I, I, I just told them all kinds of nice things about you. <laughs> really nice things or not really? Hi. Hey. Really nice things. You know, that you're the brains behind the operation. Yeah. So, <laughs> which we know is true. So, that's okay. So Jeremy was inspired insider. So I was just telling him how you are now HR and before you were instrumental in kicking me out of the house. Yep. Yep. I did kick him out. I mean, <laughs> really, you're one of the reasons because, I mean, obviously anything with mail and looks and smells is the reason we do that stuff is because of, the you know, reason he did it was because of you, I'm assuming. He didn't really yep. care yeah. if his beard was scratchy or whatever the case was. So He wouldn't care what it smelled right. like or looked like. He's still sometimes, I'm like, dude. <laughs> what so now we have you on for a second what's your favorite story from the journey so far oh, um because you've seen it all from the very beginning till now uh, you know that's a good question i i don't know i feel like it's been a whirlwind i can't even think of specifics it's because you have I mean, to manage was, that, you have to manage. Now you have a, a son, right? Yep. And you were yep. managing twelve-hour shifts as a nurse, right? Yep. So, what what sticks out to you when you think back? Uh, what sticks out the most is when I was pregnant and all the smells. Yeah. Like what he would when he had it in the garage. I'd come home after a long shift and. I want you want to kill me. Yeah, that's why I kicked him out of the house, really, because I just couldn't stand the smells. What like they're just so strong, and when you're pregnant, it's it's an overdrive. Yeah. Yeah, it's not you know in the, in the little tids, it's not concentrated, but when we're making the product, it's very concentrated smells. Yeah. Um. So it's not the same as you know in the product. It's awesome. I could stand that the whole time I was pregnant, but having the just straight essential oils everywhere and the mess in the house. But you had to, he was saying, when you'd wake up for your shift, you'd have to kind of get the, the yeah, labels started. Yeah, I, I would print um, all the shipping labels for the day because he wasn't as good at doing that. He said I was a lot faster. A lot so faster. I, would, I would get up at between 3.30 and 4.30 wow. because my shift starts at 7 or 6.45. So I'd get up between 3.30 and 4.30 and do a bunch of the shipping labels and then get ready for work. So at that point, were you thinking, I want to join this business full time or, or not really? No. No. <laughs> no, I just, it was kind of like, you know, you just go where you're needed. Yeah. So, and that's how it's kind of always been. It's, I just do what, what's needed. I, I, I say I'm HR, but I do a lot more. It's right. like, oh, well, he we're the HR, have we're the janitor, this. we're the product mixer, we're the labeler, we're everything. Yeah, you just go where yeah. you're needed. So, yeah. you know, with the different projects that we have going on, I'll take on different projects. And, you know, with the house, he can't manage the house anymore. He doesn't have time. 
So I've got to manage the son, the house, and then whatever projects that he yeah. has, he can. We're, we're, we're just excited for our son to be old enough to make sample sizes. Yeah. How old is he now? He just turned a year. Okay. Slave labor, child labor, just put him to work. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you got those tiny little fingers to make the samples. They're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> then he'll drink it or whatever he'll do with it, right? What What do you do for productivity to keep everything organized, right? You have to manage the household, the, the, the son, and at the time, the nurse and the HR. What do you do that helps you stay organized? Google Calendar. Google Calendar. What else? Yeah, yeah. that's my lifesaver. Everything goes in the calendar. If it's not the calendar, it doesn't exist. Oh, Google Calendars and then Google Docs because we yep, can, we can access we can access both from our phone on the go. So if I need to see a document that's been updated by another one of the employees or by Ashley or by by Greg, um, yeah, I can just jump on my phone, open the doc, and and, and see what's changed. Yeah. And the same with the calendar. You know, I, I'm terrible at, at keeping a schedule, so I haven't heard go through and put everything in. I get reminders on my phone. It's been, it's been a lifesaver. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Thank cool. you. Ever check out badassbeardcare.com. We didn't yep. know that, but I didn't. It's really the badass. I'm going to name it after your mom because anyone who's a black belt in karate is a badass. Um, there you go. Thank you, guys. Where else should we point people towards? Any other places on Facebook or? or yeah. So if, if they want to follow us on Facebook, it's just facebook.com slash badassbeardcare. Uh, if people want to get a free sample, uh, badassbeardcare.com slash free dash trial mm -hmm. or they can just go to badassbeardcare.com and there's a link for the free sample there on the site itself yeah. Um, and yeah just fi find us on so social media if you guys are local to Roseville, California uh, stop by the mall I'll be there working for uh, probably another week <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah I'd love to see people alright thanks guys cool thank, thank you Jeremy you. appreciate it bye what I got you can't buy it resides between my eyes Walk through the fire, came out